What's up everybody, Cigar Sherpa Laird Mayhew back with another cigar review and today I've got the just released Punch Kung Pao in Toro, stay tuned. All right, all right. Welcome back. Welcome back to another installment here at Cigar Sherpa. I, of course, am your host, Laird Mayhew. And if this is your first time here, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button. Or maybe you don't know what to do because it's your first time. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell. Get notified when we put out a review. If it's not your first time back, well, then welcome back as always. It's always glad to see you. Whew. <laughs> all right. Now that I got that out of the way, as my intro said, I have got the brand new, just released, hot off the presses, from Punch, the Kung Pao. This is number three in the series of, I don't know, Chinese food takeout themed um, packaged cigars. There was the egg roll in 2019. Good cigar. A great cigar, actually. I really enjoyed that one. Um, there was a chop suey last year, which was an okay cigar. I enjoyed it. Wasn't as good as the egg roll. And now we've got the Kung Pao. Now, I did score a box of these. Now, they only made 4,500 boxes. 4,500 or 4,600? They only made 4,500 boxes. And I got two of them. I got one on its way. All right. I secured two, but only two came into the shop. And I had to, one second, y'all. And I had to let the shop, you know, spread them around to sell them to other people. So I'll wait on my next box. Pretty nifty little box. I like these. I always buy two, one to smoke and one to put in the humidor. I've got the, uh, the egg roll and the Kung Pao in the humidor still in the plastic. So the next one I get will go in the plastic. We're doing the humidor. I don't know. It's catchy. I'm not even a big fan of Punch anymore. I used to back in my early days. It was one of my go-to cigars. But as you can see, it comes in a little foil pack. You lift up the sides just like you would if you ordered some Kung Pao chicken. Okay, there's the, uh, the cover. Just a little piece of cardboard. And the rest is a tray. And then you got 20 cigars in there. And I have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13. I've got 13 left because, you know, I smoked one, of course, as soon as I cracked the box. And I, you know, I gave them away to people that were interested in them. And that's just how I do. I try to get out of there quick because I'm so generous. I'll walk out with three cigars. So, anyway, um, Interesting. We got a five country blend on this one. And I, you know what? To make the review better, I should have went ahead and looked up the past blends that they had on the on the, um, the chop soy and the egg roll. But I didn't. But I did a review on the chop soy. And the egg roll's been reviewed plenty. So if you're really interested, you can go back and look. This one's got a Connecticut broadleaf um, wrapper. It's got a Honduran uh, Habano binder. And then it's got uh, uh, fillers from Honduras. Dominican Republic, uh, Brazil, no, sorry, yeah, Brazil, and Mexico. So make sure I got that out because I'm trying to look at my notes, but I did write it down. <laughs> Honduras, Brazil, Dominican Republic, and Mexico. Um, very nice wrapper. It's got a slight sheen to it. Mine does anyway. You can probably see that. Uh, it's toothy. You, you get in the light and you look down, you can kind of see the, the, the oil pockets, the bumps, that also known as tooth. It's got a shaggy foot on it. Um... That means that the about the last inch of the cigar is just no wrapper. It's just binder and filler, which is interesting because you get a, when you light it up, you get one flavor profile for about five minutes until that wrapper kicks in. And then that wrapper kicks in and it changes the flavor profile. And that kind of will give you an idea, if you pay attention to it, of how much flavor the wrapper actually lends to the cigar. Again, that's a big debate. I guarantee if you ask five cigar reviewers or just five cigars enthusiasts, you're going to get five different ratios. My take on it's going to be about a 70%, 70-30, maybe 60-40. I don't know. I don't know. It does lend a lot of flavor, especially with the Connecticut Broadleaf. Got some sweetness in there. Got some earthiness in there. So um, it has got a triple cap on there. Like a musty barnyard smell coming off the wrapper. little it's earthy smell maybe a little sweetness not quite just like a damp earth with a hint of sweetness in there but uh i'm gonna give this thing a punch a light and come back and tell you what to think about it stay tuned all right all right like i said the first just about a little under an inch maybe a half an inch three quarters of an inch i'm just getting binder and i'm getting filling there's no wrapper so
There's a black pepper on the retro hell. It's smooth at first, but it's kind of creeping in in the back right there on the back of it. And I think that's probably typical of any cigar that's got black pepper. If you retro hell right on the first puff, you're going to get stung. I do it all the time. So there you go. Smooth. It's a smooth black pepper. A little like the 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 flavor that I'm getting on the palate is just like some earth. Some leather. Black pepper, earth, and leather. That's really all I'm getting. There's a little bit of a sweetness that's kind of creeping in. But uh, it's pretty harsh right here without the um, the wrapper to kind of smooth it out. Um, it's just like a harsh tobacco. Got a little spice creeping in now. Now I think we're starting to get a little bit closer. I might be burning the... The wrapper a little bit, starting to get a little sweeter, starting to get a little spice, but overall right now I'm getting a nice nice black pepper in the retro hail, but on the palate I'm only getting like a leather and like a damp earth. So I'm going to let this thing develop and get into the first third, let that, let that wrapper start to uh, burn along with everything else. Come back and tell you what to think about it. Stay tuned. All right, all right. We're well into the first third, and now that that uh, broadleaf wrapper has been fully enveloped into the burn and the flavor of the cigar it does pick up a good sweetness um that's uh that damp earthy nuance flavor that i was getting is kind of taking a back seat and a, a, a cedar actually a pretty strong cedar comes to the uh, forefront right on the palate it's like a spicy cedar too the pepper in the retro hail kind of goes away and there's not really much in the retro hail which is sad because that's part of the Cigar that I really enjoy is having a good flavor wash in the retro hell. There is a baking spice that is probably a little bit more cinnamon than nutmeg, but it's 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 a mix, but a cinnamon prominent. Uh, there is a sweetness, and the finish is it's a long finish, but it ain't a strong. It's not an overpowering finish. Like I've got like a nice oily sweet finish that's a little bit zingy not citru like citrusy zingy but like a peppery zing so that's all i'm getting right now it's burning absolutely beautiful for a rustic looking cigar you know it's lumpy i don't know if i mentioned i did say it was a toro it's a 52 ring gauge by six inch cigar pretty cool band on it too and underneath that band has a fortune okay i'm not i'll read my fortune <laughs> like a fortune cookie whenever i get down to take it off i'm gonna let that glue kind of warm up on it before I take it off, but there's really nothing in the retro hill. I'm getting absolutely nothing. I mean, I get the sensation of smoke and I can kind of pick up a little bit of the sweetness and maybe detect spice, but I can't feel it really. It's just very smooth. Not a big fan of that, but the overall flavor, the sweet, earthy, cedary, um, baking spice and there's almost a like a dried fruit coming in on the uh, finish now so i'm gonna pay attention to that get into the second third come back and tell you what to think about it stay tuned all right all right all right we're in the second third just about to the halfway point things smoking beautiful it's burning great it's just now starting to get a little bit wonky there but for how i smoke my cigars which is traditionally just probably a little bit faster than what's recommended by some people um, I don't, again, I don't know who makes those rules, but um, I, I typically smoke my cigars a little bit quicker than, than, than a lot of people, which will cause the, uh, the burn to get a little bit uneven. Flavor-wise, it is falling short of what I was expecting. And a lot of times when we see these cigars that we've never had before, like, you know, like, like the Kung Pao um, or the Chop Suey or anything else that's coming out, you start to get excited about trying it. And there's almost a tendency to almost like it before it even comes out, you know? But, uh, so, with that in mind, it kind of fell short of my expectations. I was expecting a little bit more of a pepper kick. And it started off with a good black pepper kick, um, but it died out, and uh, the retro hail is almost nothing. Now, you can pick up the flavors on the retro hail. I'm getting the, uh, the, the, the spice. It's like a sweet spice. I'm getting it on the retro hail, but it's very warm, and it's not... It's not kicking me in the face. You know, I don't really feel that black pepper burn. So it is a mixture of black pepper and uh, baking spice with more cinnamon forward. And you're getting that on the retro hill. But it's like I said, there's no kick to it. It's just kind of very smooth. 
Um, still cedary, almost like a dry cedar at this point. Um, it was like a nice, uh, not not creamy so much, but it was a nice, almost creamy, oily type cedar. Now it's just kind of leaving my palate dry. Um, earthiness kind of takes a back seat. There is a little hint of leather that's still there. It kind of stays with it. Uh, the finish is about a medium finish, and you do get like a... I'm getting like a like an oily coating, but there's just not much flavor. You can feel it there. It's just not. It's not. It's not punching. And the dried fruit. The dried fruit reminds me of like a like a dried cherry. Okay, but it's very faint. Um, I have to really reach for it. like. The nuance reminds me of a dried fruit, but then when I really think about it, it's a, it's more like a dried cherry. And the Retro Hell now is kind of giving me that mint sensation without the mint flavor. You know that kind of cooling that mint does. And I, I don't know. I don't. I'm not. It's not really. Uh, it's not doing it for me. But I am enjoying it. You see what I'm saying? I was expecting to give you all these uh, pepper kicks and this very sweet, strong cinnamon core and all this stuff, but it's just kind of falling short of my expectations. So I hope I don't ruin it for you. It's still a very good cigar, and I'm still enjoying it. A little bit of a cocoa coming in there now. So maybe the uh, final third, maybe they've got the uh, some Lajeros packed in there. It's going to give us a little bit more kick, but the only one way to tell that is bring it into the final third, and I will come back and tell you to think about it from there. Stay tuned. All right, all right. We are in the final third here, and um, uh, you know, just at the final third, I probably could have waited a little bit longer. But the uh, got some developments, not really developments, but this, the the I'll just get to it. The throughout the whole cigar, the uh, the spice, the baking spice, has been and the sweetness have, has been kind of like an undertone. Okay, it's earthy, it's cedary. There is that dried fruit nuance. Uh, there's little to no black pepper in the retro hail. Um, but here in the final third, since I took the band off, that spicery and um, sweetness kind of ramps up, okay? And the strength kind of kicks up. So throughout the whole thing, it's been real medium, medium bodied, uh, medium flavors, and uh, the strength's been about medium. Now it's kind of kicking up. It's more of a full bodied cigar now. I'm getting more um, palate spice, more sweetness on the palate. Very good. And it's got like a red pepper zing to it now on the finish. A um, little bit of a, a chocolatey note comes in there. Uh, I'm pairing this with, with black coffee. I'm just drinking black coffee with it, just sipping on it. But um, yeah, Retro Hell is still the same. Not really getting a kick in there at all. Burning good. Or, I mean, real good. Nice tight ash. It's nice and white. But um, I'd say the, the finish is almost like a medium long finish. It does coat your mouth. I got a little bit of a tingle. Like a like a red pepper zing on, on the finish there, it's kind of oily, but it's very like it's one of those that you think is going to be a nice strong punch as you're drawing it and you're getting it in your sinuses and your mouth, and then you start to blow it out, and then it just kind of goes real faint there. So overall, I, I I guess I'm just disappointed only because I'm not getting the the really anything in the retro hell. And that's just disappointing to me. But overall, the flavor is good. It's all, there's a nuance there that I can't quite finger. I just I, I want to say bready uh, with the smoke, with the you know the warm spice and the cedar all just kind of mixed together as kind of bready, I guess. But there's something there that I just can't pinpoint. So maybe when you smoke it, you you'll pick up on it, or maybe you'll pick up something I didn't, and, and you can throw it in the comments. But The smoke gets a little bit more thick and not quite creamy, but just a little bit more full here in the final third. And it's not getting hot or anything like that. Like I said, I still got, man, probably a good 15, 20 minutes I could sit here and smoke on this thing. But uh, anyway, the uh, the fortune, when you take off your uh, your band under, let me put this cigar down real quick. When you underneath the band there, you get a little fortune, kind of like a fortune cookie. And I think you, you got that on the, the last two in the series as well. And mine says, the only bad taco is the one you didn't eat. Okay. I mean, I guess tacos are like pizza, you know, uh, kind of like sex. Even when it's bad, it's still just a little bit good, right? So anyway, this is the Punch Kung Pao with an exclamation point. Comes in a 20 count 
takeout style box. And of course, the Chinese New Year uh, Zodiac, whatever you want to call it this year, is the year of the ox. Okay, And they had a whole description on why with the... You can look that up for yourself if you know what it is. Prosperity, hard work, because, you know, the bull, the ox works hard. It's a workhorse. But, uh, yeah, you want to get your hands on these um, quick. So if you got a tobacconist or you order online, you want to go ahead and put your orders in now because they only made 4,500 boxes, and a lot of people are going to be buying them just because it's a limited run. And overall, it's a, it's a good cigar. This is the second one that I've smoked. Now, the one that I smoked yesterday when I first got it, um, I posted on my Instagram you know, I had it on my little nub poker holder thingy. Had a little bit more uh, zing to it. Had a little bit more, uh, I was picking up a little more of that sweet spice. It was, you know, uh, today it just kind of fell short. But the retro hell yesterday and today is about the same. So anyway, it's got the uh, Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper. It's got the Honduran Habano binder. And then it's got the Mexican, Brazil, Brazilian uh, Dominican Republic and the Honduran filler. So check it out, y'all. Cigar Sherpa, Laird Mayhew, reminding you to be polite to everybody that you meet, but always have a backup plan in case things go south. And I'm out.